This is a scene from my Deadpool anime. And you know what? I hate it. This is a project that relies on the knowledge I've gained in the previous projects of this series. With every animation, I've learned more and more about how to create a 2D looking anime in 3D. The compositing, colors and movement combined with what I already knew about 3D animation all culminated in this project. Now after finishing it, I realize I might have to rethink almost everything I've learned so far. The goal was to create a Deadpool animation, but instead of something like this, it's supposed to look more like this. To make sure that I hit that goal, I created a plan for how exactly I wanted to create this project to make sure that I never run into any issues. Because, well, that's what plans are for, right? In part 1, I created the characters, the general style I'm going for, and developed what the final animation could generally look like. Afterwards, I realized that I was still missing two major things to be able to create the actual animation. The first thing might not be that obvious until you look around. Still can't see anything? Exactly. For the environment, my plan was to keep it pretty simple because I wanted to focus more on the characters rather than what's around them. So this should be good enough. My main inspiration here was this scene from One Punch Man. The second thing still missing is the storyboard. First, I wrote down my ideas in text and afterwards sketched out how the shots are roughly supposed to look like. In the end, there were so many shots that I set myself a two minute timer to draw each one of these. So don't come at me for how they look, okay? <laughs> And there you go, the storyboard is also done. Here's my idea for the animation. The first scene starts with Deadpool. Then Wolverine appears. But it's pretty clear that Wolverine is not here to talk. Deadpool doesn't mind a quick fight though, so he gets ready, but is surprised by Wolverine's speed. He's barely able to block Wolverine's attack, stumbles a bit, but now both are ready to fight. They clash together in multiple vicious attacks, during which both suffer some injuries. But the fight is not done yet. Deadpool dodges a series of Wolverine's attacks, jumps into the air, Wolverine jumps after him. Ready to cut him into pieces, Wolverine realizes that Deadpool is gone. He faked jumping to get his katana back. Now Wolverine is furious and turns into this fiery meteor of blades, falling towards Deadpool. Deadpool tries to break Wolverine's attack, but that just makes him even more angry. Nothing is stopping Wolverine at this point. The fiery meteor comes closer and closer to the ground, crashing into it and creating a huge crater of destruction. Sounds doable. Now I have a plan for how I want to create the animation and also what to create. During my last two anime projects, I've explored a couple of different techniques to create the traditional anime look. Now in this new animation, my plan was to combine the best parts from both of these. And for the first few scenes, I basically went through the full creation process to see if what I thought could work actually works. First, I 3D animate both characters how I sketched it out in my storyboard. Once that looks good, I add a 2D grease pencil layer. This layer sits in front of the 3D scene, which allows me to do some manual fixes to make the 3D models look more 2D. Any mistakes I see in the 3D scene, I can now fix manually by drawing over it. The plan for how I wanted to create this animation worked out perfectly. The only issue was that these first few scenes took quite a while to create. I finished three scenes in five days. With 48 scenes in total, this animation would take me almost three months. But the first few scenes will always take longer because I first have to get, you know, good at this new workflow. And now that I knew that this workflow uh, works, I decided to first 3D animate all scenes and afterwards refine them by drawing over them. For the animation, my plan was to focus on three main aspects that I wanted to make as good as possible. I generally started each scene by blocking out the basic poses first. They're the ones that really define the movement and look of an animation. Afterwards, I can fill in the gaps to make it nice and smooth. Cause you're hurt, you're sexy, you're 
This interpolation of the in-between frames can speed up the process a lot, but it actually makes the animation too smooth. In traditional anime, artists save time by only drawing every second or sometimes even only every third or fourth frame. This is one of the most important aspects of anime, so I had to emulate that here as well. I can use the interpolation to nail the pacing and rhythm, then afterwards save every second frame and remove the others by disabling interpolation again. The second important aspect is the composition of the shots. Anime works with two different styles, a painterly static style and a more simple dynamic style. It takes much longer to create this kind of look, so any scene that includes it is generally more static. For every scene, you basically have to check which style you would use if it was a traditional anime, and if it would include the painterly style, the camera can't really move that much or the 2D illusion is broken. It's an interesting challenge trying to not make every scene too dynamic while also not making them too static. What helps with that is the third aspect I focused on. Anime doesn't shy away from using over-the-top abstract effects to make scenes more dramatic. So I did the same, like this shot for example. Or this one, which you've seen before. Going over-the-top with the impact and strength that a character has is what makes anime anime. But creating effects like this can take a long time. So I decided to create a collection of procedural anime VFX for myself and now you. They can speed up the process of creating stuff like this a lot and are built to be versatile. So one of these effects can be used to create a whole range of looks. I've designed them to be as simple as possible so that even if you've never used geometry notes before, you'll be able to use these and create awesome looking effects like this one. If you're interested, feel free to check out the links in the description. There was a lot to get right for the animation, but even with all of that, the 3D animation still went by pretty quickly. Just how I had planned. But after the first few scenes, I knew that the 2D layer is the step that takes the longest. Now that I have some practice though, I should be able to get through these much quicker. Maybe? The shader on the 3D model creates these stylized shadows which look pretty good. Maybe a little too good. Since the shadows in anime are drawn by a human, they are never really 100% physically correct, and sometimes even purposefully simplified. So the main goal with the 2D grease pencil layer is to add that human aspect back into it. Sometimes you have weird wobbly shadows, sometimes you have too many shadows, sometimes the shadows are too detailed. Now all of those can be fixed by drawing over them. The other big aspect of this step is to refine the line art. You can automatically create line art by using the grease pencil line art modifier. But those lines won't be perfect, so you need to refine them manually afterwards to get the best results possible. For every scene, I usually fix the line art first and afterwards refine the shading. It can be hard sometimes to not draw over the lines, but with enough patience, the first frame is done. Wait, the first frame? Yep. After spending two days on this shot, I realized that this will take much longer than I expected. If I continue to follow the plan I've made for myself, this animation will take me months to complete. I don't have months. I wanted to finish this in one month. I needed to find whatever technique I could to get this done as fast as possible. It started fairly slow. The next two scenes weren't as detailed, so I could save some time that way, but that won't make the following scenes any faster. In the next scene though, I learned a bunch of new techniques. If I integrate the 2D layer into the 3D scene, for example, I can make it follow the actual 3D model and fix this hand, for example, automatically. Speaking of automation, I can also automate some of the line art refining. Not the part where I remove unnecessary lines, but the ones where I add new ones. By adding these simple edges to the model, they will be picked up by the automatic line art modifier as lines and drawn automatically for each frame. This can actually save a ton of time in most scenes. There's also the interpolation tool. It allows you to interpolate the grease pencil frame in between two other frames. This way you can automate up to 70% of work that you otherwise would have had to do manually. If I knew any of these techniques from the beginning, I could have been at this point days ago. Before I finished a scene in one to two days, now I can finish two to three in a single day. I was zooming through these scenes. 
But even with these new techniques, finishing the entire animation would take way too long. So I decided to end it at an earlier point where it would still make sense. I actually live streamed this whole second part of the project up until this point. In one of the last scenes I had to refine, somebody asked if I had tried using the fill bucket. I tried using it a couple minutes earlier after somebody mentioned it the first time, but quickly gave up on it because I just didn't understand how it worked. After the second comment though, I decided to give it another shot and this time I figured out how you're actually supposed to use it. In that moment I realized how much time I could have saved if I used this tool since the beginning. Hours and hours of painstakingly drawing within the lines could have been done with a single click. And what kept me from doing so was my plan. And because I knew of a way to do it, I never even considered that there might be a better way. After finishing this project, I started rethinking everything I do to find more of these habits that slow me down. And I actually found quite a few already. I can highly recommend you to do the same in your life. Start rethinking some of the tasks you're doing and see if there might be a better way to do them. You might be amazed by what you'll discover. After all of this, I do hate this project, but I also love it. It has taught me a hard lesson, but one I'm glad to have learned.